Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to yoga again. It's lovely to see you all, um, to recognize so many names. Um, so we're going to dive into our class for an hour. And uh, this is the last class before Christmas, because Christmas is in a couple of days. And um, then I'm taking a break. So we'll pick up again um, after the 11th of January, but we'll send out a, um, a little mailing. So I think what we'll do today is we'll dig around in the garden. We'll rummage around in the gardens of our bodies. And um, I'll pick from all the main themes, but mostly we've, we've done one thing. We've been taking time to step away from looking at ourselves and performing goodness, moral goodness. And we've started to dive into the river of our body selves and uh, discovering that we can't earn peace and we can't earn love and we don't earn grace. And uh, so when we dive in and we participate in the richness of our lived lives and our bodies, it's a wonderful thing. And yoga, yoga is about that. Of course, there are biological realities and you don't want to hurt a joint and you got to get to know your body. But really the yoga shapes and the frame around the physical part of yoga, the hatha yoga, the bringing together of sun and moon is... Um, is a journey into making friends with this thing, not looking at it and controlling it and all of that. So, and the main thing we've been playing with is our sense of weight and through hanging out with the sense of weight and not worrying or scripting it, we've begun to see that the spine bends forward and it bends back and it comes into rotation. And the more we orient it, so the more we have antlers and branches and the more we have roots, the bigger the capacity for the spine to make those movements is. The less we are oriented, so the more we're in, oh, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, it wasn't me, <laughs> like that, then the less the spine is able to move because it's under a closing contraction. And gravity is always offering us this incredible gift of discovering that the body wants to lengthen. And there's no perfect shape to lengthening. There's no perfect shape to sanctity grounds. And like a carrot comes up. And it's always a discovery. It's always a total mysterious discovery for a lifetime. And we have these amazing accidents of perception as we play. And we discover uh, that the breath is supporting us. And I've said a number of times that you, you do, there's no way to breathe correctly and you don't need to worry about the breath. But after a while, as you play, you discover that the breath is a wave that makes the body undulate like this. And that this wave that makes the body undulate or oscillate in gravity is profoundly healing. When a child is peaceful and happy, it undulates, it moves and it rocks. And you can tell when a child is frightened, it doesn't, it just holds very still and it tries not to be noticed. So. We want to free that up. So it raises wonderful questions about sitting still in meditation. So stillness is not something you put on yourself like a straitjacket. It's actually something that's inherent in our naturalness and it emerges. So you might be moving, but you might be very still. The only time you don't move is when you die. We don't want to do that during the class or anyway before Christmas. So here we go. Let's start lying on your backs. Yeah. And let's start with the legs bent today. So it doesn't matter. You can choose legs straight, legs bent. Let's start with the legs bent.
Could you come down a little? Because sure. you're looking completely relaxed and decapitated. <laughs> no, no, everything's fun. Oh. Yeah. So you're on your back and don't over organize anything. After a while, you get used to knowing whether you need a little bit of support under your head or your lower back or your neck. Um, but those are, you know, things that come to you after a while. And once you've settled, let your head wobble a little bit on the ground. Just very easy. It's a side to side movement and you're, you're wobbling the sense of weight. You're wobbling the weight of the head or rocking the weight of the head. And as you rock the head, take one hand and place it on your breastbone. And as relaxed as possible. Okay. So you have one hand on your breastbone, other arm may be on the floor, and then one hand on the breastbone and heavy head wobbling. And allow the hand that's on the breastbone, so it's giving you the density of the heart, the root of your neck, the inside of your chest. As it gives you that, the head is moving and the head is outside the chest and free to disentangle itself from the jungle of the body. So the one hand is giving you one thing, which is roots, density, steadiness in the chest. And the wobbling head is giving you a contrasting movement out there. That's all. It's actually a very profound differential between where the hand is and where the head is. So just, and it's an easy movement. You don't need to look at the movement. It's oily. The head is heavy. Maybe you swallow. Maybe you, you begin to notice what you've been doing today. So if you were clenching, if you were asleep, if you've been very active, whatever. So as you release the head and you wobble, you may notice that you can let go in the jaw and in the throat. And then you start to notice that the head drops back a little more towards the floor. You don't need to look at your neck from the outside and say, oh, it should be flatter or longer. So just allow, allow. But as we root into the heart with the one hand and we wobble the head in the other, we actually do begin to create oriented length, which is not shaped length, a flat neck. It's just that we come into length. This is profoundly rich and fertile. In fact, you can tell people after class that you were developing a fecund neck. <laughs> yeah, so we let go of the shapes. It's only then that the practice really I feel takes off and then you can practice in the kitchen while you're cooking in the shower it doesn't matter at the supermarket you begin just you you begin to move and there are moments of delight and surprise at stability adaptability strength there the joy starts to gurgle up and then I'm just going to I'm just going to move um, Jeremy's feet so the tendency to turn out can be quite strong. You don't want to overcorrect it, but you could just explore widening the feet if you have that very turn outy tendency. Yeah, just that's it. You were more, you were fine. And as the head moves and the one hand is on the chest. We just let the feet find their roots. Again, if you're not used to this and you, you feel like, oh, I should be doing something. Well, over time, you realize that it, it isn't about that. It's a kind of non-doing or an undoing. Just letting the weight come through 
as you lightly touch in with your awareness. You lightly touch in with your awareness. And at the moment, we're letting the eyes close, so we're inside, we're inside, the hand is on the chest, and now we're just going to swallow, and we're going to imagine the saliva going down the throat, and we're just going to imagine the, the river of your visceral space, so your visceral river your organ river flowing all the way down to your tail. Every now and then the head can move. You, know, you can use your other hand if you want to swap or put both hands one on top of the other. The eyes are closed for a moment longer. Maybe there's another swallowing. Yeah, we have feet way down there, but as we let the imagination travel down, the visceral river, maybe we let go around the anus, we let the pelvis be a bit more heavy, we allow the tail to grow out of the bum a bit more. Quite profound, quite profound, quite delicious, very friendly. Now, we're going to allow ourselves to settle back through the layers of the face. So you may go to your lips or your nostrils or your eyeballs and just translate the words into something that is meaningful for you. But we're letting go of the facial doing and holding the social engagement stuff that we do, which is wonderful how we do it, but it's quite complex and it's linked into the mood and the personality and character stuff of the, of the cortex, but also the middle brain, all of this communicating that I'm okay and you're okay and it's all gonna be okay. So we just, we drop back into a kind of wonderfully stupid face. Just, just sodden. It's just been raining. It is raining gravity. And your muscles of the face let go. This buccinator and orbicularis oris muscles that go around the round bits, the mouth and the eyes, it's like they yield to the rain of gravity. And you, you let go, let go on the mat, let go on the eyes. And you feel it's as if your face peels like a really ripe medlar or peach. It peels and then the face underneath, which is the bones under the behaving part, it's like they can yield and then you have, you have room across and up and down. And then you begin to discover space behind the nose. Don't try too hard. I'm just playing with images, but you may have others. And space at the back, up in the back of the gum and the back of the tongue, the floor of the mouth, space deep in the stony canal, the Petrian canal of the ear, which is this incredible structure that comes into these two side bones, the ear bones, the temporal bones. And they're like the central axis of your cranium. So suddenly there is space inside your ear and warm orange or rose scented mud is oozing out from the visceral river and there is ease from the ear canal from deep let's say in the brain if you will out and then you discover that your nose is not two straws where you're sucking air in to breathe or your mouth neither you discover that the face is open and air breath is just pouring in it's like love there's more than enough air to go around for everybody. And same with love. You know. just, it's just 
flooding in and the cranium is open. Yeah, beautiful. Then we're going to take our fingers, our hands are on the chest, but we're going to take our fingertips and put them just behind the back of the head. So go under the neck where there's space. Touch the skin of your neck. That's quite profound, wakes up the neck. And then just travel up as far as you can until the head stops you. And your arms open wide across the armpits. If you're not comfortable, you can pop a little cushion. And you're touching where the neck and the head meet, where the soft of the neck meets the hard. Do you want two of those? Soft of the neck. Hi. Here. Well, here's more if you need. The soft of the neck meets the heart of your head and your fingers are just touching back there. And then again, let your head rock from side to side. So you're nuzzling the back of your head against your fingers. And the breath, and the breath, and the breath, and the breath, and the mouth is easy. Yeah, and the mouth is easy. Brilliant. Now, a few more times, a few more, a few more rockings, a few more caressings or diggings. Then we're going to take our fingers and we're going to come around and we're going to put them under your lower back. So you can do it palms up or palms down, whatever, you know, whatever feels comfortable for your shoulders. And it's not under your bum, you can go there later, but it's really under the curve of your lower back. That's it. And just touch for a moment and feel, feel into that curve. You can press your lower back against your hand or you can let go and let the curve happen. So that's one way, Henriette. But if you turn your hands, it can be more comfortable. Yeah. So try whatever, whichever of the two works better. Great. <laughs> and then we're going to let the legs fall towards each other. So they lean against each other, l'un contre l'autre, voilà, complètement. And then we're going to let the legs fall apart, and you can start small, small, and you're playing with the weight. Of course, the muscles that pull the legs away and towards are working, but eventually, and you notice that your legs can make this butterfly movement, but there doesn't need to be any major movement in your back, right? So you've got a movement from leg to pelvis. Up. And back. <laughs> you can go very, very wide, so it's up to you. It's up to you. Don't be too rhythmical about it, just easy and playful. And just keep winding the feet. A nice lean in. Just, uh, just say when. Do people say something when they can't hear anymore? No, oh, there's a lot. Yeah, so if you couldn't hear, I stopped talking because we could hear the train going by. But we're just butterflying the legs. Okay, now we're going to take the arms away and spread them wide, palms up. And this time we're going to let the legs go in the same direction. To one side, back, to the other side. And again, it doesn't need to be too rhythmical. So you can stop along the way or at the end of the movement, whatever the end is for you. 
and pause and come back and then the other way hang out and notice when we do both legs going in the same direction there is a moment where the pelvis does rock and the spine does follow but the upper spine doesn't yeah. Very nice. Okay, so we've done this um, a few times in past class. As the leg goes over, we're going to reach. So as the legs go to the right, I reach to the right with my left arm. I'm doing it here. And then I go to the left and I reach with my left arm. My right arm, sorry. And um, you're initiating the movement from the legs and then the upper spine follows. Yeah. And then the upper spine and the head may come off the floor a bit. And if you, if you speed it up, you start to come around to sitting. You start to come around all the way up. And so <coughs> play with that. Yeah, don't hold your breath, Jeremy. You know, whatever, whatever you do, keep breathing. Yeah, come on in here. Yeah. Yeah. Less, uh, Henriette, less holding across the shoulder. So more reach, roll. That's it. And then roll. Now reach with your right arm. Yeah, so you're, that's it. Yeah, so you'll remember from last time. And let's make a sound and accelerate. You can do it completely wrong. That's the best way to do it. All the way around to sitting and roll all the way around to sitting and roll all the way around to sitting. And you can actually keep going all the way around. Yes, Henriette, that's much better. Let your head roll towards the floor. Yes. Beautiful. Wake up your feet. There's a little push for that. That's nice. There is a push from the feet. Yes. That's it. So you're not watching yourself. Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. And then roll around and come up to sitting. If you want to just lie on the floor. Oh, okay. okay, so that's improving. Look, because in the beginning, there's a tendency to be very still across mm -hmm. here like this. And then after a while, it disappears, you see, so you don't see like a bar. It's more like this one, and then it's this one. You see, yeah. as opposed to this, which would be different if you were holding a ball or a panettone. <laughs> it's that. It's a, it's a, and for you, it's great because it means that the, because you're very strong here, but then it means that this is not mm. holding all the time that you can move through. You would never see a baby like that. You would, okay. all, it would always be loose. E, depending, okay. depending, because we can brace you know, we can brace here or here. If I, if I had to push something, I would brace. But this is a different, different thing. So put your legs in front of you, a little bit wide. Put your hands behind. Lean back a little so that your belly is kind of leaning back on the spine. Tu peux reculer un peu avec les mains. Voilà. And then we just do like this. So you're kind of leaning back and then you're kind of letting the leg wobble up. Yeah. And then just rest. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. <laughs> Okay. 
you really look very sweet from the camera point of view. <laughs> so then we're going to walk up from, from our hands, we're going to walk up to be upright. So use your hands, use your hands, otherwise you're going to have to hold, yeah. We're going to come up, we're going to come up. So you're going to come as high as you can, yeah. And you'll start to feel that the body's pulling. We're all different, but you'll start to feel. So in order to keep coming up, we actually have to lift ourselves up. Not so much, but it's like the pelvis, that's it. The pelvis stays on the floor, yeah. And we lift ourselves up and we come a little more forward. Yeah, and we come a little more forward. Great. And then release back again. Okay, and then bend the legs like this. Yeah. Same thing, we're gonna walk up. So all the classes, remember where we played with where the sit bones are and being on top, you will feel that this position is pushing you on the back of your sit bones. So use your hands to slowly, that's better, much, and that's very good for your back, you know. So, and you don't, that's nice. You don't need to worry, am I doing it right? Just play, you can see me. If I don't lift, I eventually come up here like this. And I, I actually can't change it because now my lumbar vertebrae are all locked into this position. So, but if I'm coming along and I'm actually imagining that I'm lifting one off the pelvis and the next one and the next one, each in our own way, we, yeah, we, you start to have, and we'll do it very differently. You can see here in Germany, they're different, but we start to have this possibility of coming up and maybe forward. Yeah. Forward. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're a chosen soul, that you can come more forward. <laughs> But we are very different and our bony, the signature, the bony signature of the pelvis is very, very profound because it's one of the key shaping things of the body. So we have to get to know it, you know. So you keep coming up and you keep, that's it, Henriette, that's beautiful. And you keep coming forward, not so much from the chin, but from the lift here. Lift, yes. And then you can let go for a bit and reposition your feet. You could pull them in a little. So don't worry if your knees are up or down. Don't worry at all. Put your feet together. And then again, we lift a little. <coughs> if, if your movement is very small, but there is this feeling of lifting, just close your eyes and enjoy it. Yeah. It's a... Uh, you know, the movement is immortalized in St. Teresa of Avila in the Basilica in St. Peter, you know, she's in this position up here, completely opening up as she receives the transverberation from God. Yes, see Henriette, St. Henriette from Avila also. That's it, that's it, that's amazing. So the knees drop, the torso comes up, and you're playing, it could be a big movement or a small movement, that's immaterial. It's this looking for this lift, the, the work is all in the hands. Yeah, and then let go, and come back, and let the legs widen up. How was that? It's good, huh? It's good. Yeah. Yeah, and resting. So we're going to bring the one leg like this. <laughs> and we're going to we're going to bring the other leg up. And we're going to put it over. 
That's another saying, doesn't it? Yeah, it is actually. This in, in the yoga asanas, this is named after Saint Matsyendra. It's called Matsyendrasana. So we, we, we've got one leg over the other. See, we're all different. It doesn't matter. Um, if it's very difficult, you can just, just start by just going like that or like that. And you can put cushions under if it's painful. <laughs> but if you can get one leg over, so the knee and the foot are near each other, that's a good start. And we're just going to bring ourselves back to the middle. It's quite strong, hands behind. And we're just going to let that leg hang. Yeah. Si tu peux laisser que ça penche un peu. Yeah. It's okay on the knee? Yes. Okay. So just like that. That's it. And you can feel the weight of the leg is, is making a work deep inside the pelvis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're quite mobile, so you'll feel it less than, than somebody else. Everyone okay over there at home with this bit? Now, you can stop there or don't get too uptight about the next bit because it just takes a little bit of playing. But we're going to see if this knee can go towards this knee like this. So it's like the feet walk away. You can play with your hands. Yeah. And you bring the, the knees towards each other. Now, the secret, Henriette, is that the foot in the beginning should not go towards the bum right away because it gives you one particular shape, which we are not doing. So the foot is out. The two feet are out. Yeah. So there's two variations. Yeah, that's it. Two feet are out. The knees are coming towards each other. Yeah, it's good in the hips. Yeah. That's it, that's it. And when the feet are far, you take your hand and you bring yourself to the middle. So you're looking down the middle of your twined legs. And if you've gotten all confused or worried about symmetry and all this stuff, which is unimportant, you can close your eyes because you'll feel that, <clears throat> don't force in the hips, but it's a very strong movement. Can I do a little bit? <laughs> so you stay up. Yeah, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you want this to face that way. Mm -hmm. That's it. See? And your legs go that mm -hmm. way. And it's like they're going away. The second variation is towards the bone. You, if it hurts your knee, you tell me. It hurts? No, you must even a little bit. It, if it, yeah. Wow, well, stuff in mouth. Okay. Okay. Well, come more to the middle and more up. Yeah, don't struggle. Which middle? Which middle? This one facing me. So I'm going to bring. Just, I, I'm going to go very slowly, so you'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's great. Now, over time, this will drop, and this will go up. Yeah, like that. That's it. Is it too strong? Yeah. No, great. So I do a little more then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lawrence was telling yesterday the story of... <laughs> A woman who went to visit. Oh, no, he came to and he broke her arm twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can do the same with the leg. <laughs> yeah, if I break your leg, I'll go, we broke your leg. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Like that. That's very good. Yeah, you see, Jeremy, look where you are. It's dropping. Yeah, very good, like this. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to, we come up a little bit. You can even lean back and open up your chest. Don't have any idea about where things could go. Just let your body breathe. 
let gravity pour through you. Let the weight teach you where the weight goes. And then we can fold forward just a little bit, really curl. Don't force, don't force. And then we come back up. Yeah. Yeah, and then we come under and we just roll back very gently. We undo the feet. So the, the, the important no-no is if your knees were hurting. So there should be no discomfort in the knee, which will mean that you're making the hip structures move, which is the good thing. <coughs> okay, huh? the other one? Yeah, let's wobble the legs for a moment. And then we go the other way. Ça va? Wide wobble. Okay. On the beach. On the beach. Yeah. So the other leg. So if your leg is up here, that's fine. If it's painful, you put a cushion, that's fine. So we let go. Then we bring the other leg. And we, so you can use the mat to help you know where you are because you had rotated all the way that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to end up facing down the middle of my mat. I bring my leg over. Yeah. Now I let the leg fall open. It's another feeling. It's different, huh? Yeah, it's always different the way the two sides talk to each other. <clears throat> yeah. Let it hang, if you can. And the breath, that's very nice, Henriette, the breath. We were talking a couple of classes ago about the relationship between sensing and doing. So nerves give us impulses for doing, but they also receive impulses, which we call sensing. And the doing, the, the movement and the sensing go together. So when you realize that you're a little too active in the doing and the structuring, and the, you can drop back and just sense, okay, how does the weight of the leg feel? Am I comfortable? What happens if I move a little bit to the left or the right? the sense of weight, the breath. Okay, so I'm gonna come up a little. Yeah, now the foot, don't bring it towards your bum. Let the foot go out that way, that way. And this foot is going out that way. So they go away from each other. And then what I normally do is I, I lift my calf muscle back there and I bring my two knees towards each other. That's yeah. Mais toi, il faut que tu pousses le pied par là. Yeah. That's it. And then the hands, and then you get all confused, which is the really yogic moment. And you want to face that way. So you know that that foot has to go more that way. Which way? That one. That one. Mm -hmm. Towards the microphone. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, that's it. You see? That's it. So, Jeremy, the more your hips rotate, the less your knee rotates, which means the proper function is there and not there. So when you sit for meditation and you make all the turning in here, then you have a problem. You start to have discomfort. But when the turning is happening in the hip joint and the knee is quiet, you're going in the right direction. So this pose, which is called in, in the yoga terms the position of the cow, the holy cow. Oh, I recognize that. Yeah, with the legs like that. Well, I always wondered, yeah. But I always think it's the two <laughs> legs of the front of the cow. Mm -hmm. Like, you know how they sit like that. And then you do this with your arms. And this is the long horn of the cow. Yeah, it's a one-horned sacred cow. Yeah, that's it, opening. And then we can make it strong. By lifting up, you can even lift your bum and reposition yourself, yeah. And come into the center of what you're doing. Doesn't matter how big or small. Don't get frustrated, just play, play, play. 
And the first time we roll down, but this time we're gonna lean forward. Lean forward, if your body leans. Lean, lean. No discomfort in the knee, just in the pelvis. Great, and then we come back. Very nice. And we come undone. And we'll just lie back quite wide, long legs. We'll just, we'll just have a break. <clears throat> yeah. Just have a break. Man. Yeah. Yeah, so you're getting heavy and it's always helpful to let the head wobble a little. So you, you know, just do what you need. Yeah, and the vertebrae release and there's a different tension in your pelvis. So there will be a different possibility in the upper body. It's always like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very often we resolve things in the body, not where it feels like there's a mess, but somewhere else. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Christmas is the time to have a pregnant spine. Yeah. Beautiful, do you feel the breath, the weight? Okay. Yeah, so when you're ready, you're going to come around onto your hands and knees, but try not to do a sit-up. So in a few breaths, you're gonna to roll to the left or the right. And that's really something to get used to doing, even when you get out of bed. That was beautiful here. You roll, tu vas tourner d'un côté à l'autre sans guider par la tête. So you roll, that's it. And the body rolls, and that's what brings you around. <clears throat> yeah. So we come round. Okay. So have a look again. So in this one, you can use your mat to help you see where you're going. This is much safer than the one we just did, but it's a little more complicated to get it, to get the correct feeling. But if you have trouble sitting, these are very good because they open the hips and they educate you out of bothering your knees. Just watch me for a minute. So I'm gonna bring the foot forward. Okay, so that's my right foot and it's on the right side of the mat. Okay, and I'm kind of about to do a lunge, but now I'm gonna take my right foot and put it on the left side of the mat. So I'm gonna put it there, okay? But I'm gonna go back with my hand on the right side, you see? So I'm doing that same bendy movement as I did when I was here. It's just different, but it's the same thing. So like this, this, and I put it there, okay? And I put my hand back, and then I'm gonna go back, but it's a lunge with a sideways turn, okay? Like that. You can always have your mobile phone nearby so you can dial 999 if you need to. 112. Yeah, or 112 in Europe, yeah. 1999 in, in England. Okay, it's just like that. So my foot, let's do it together. So I bring a foot forward. So I'm in on your marks, get set, go position. Okay. Right foot forward. On your marks, get set, go. But instead of running, you take your foot and you put it on the other side. Voilà. But I put my hand back. That's it. 
So you see I'm leaning, yeah, you can see everyone. So that's it. Now to make, make it a bit more powerful, I just go back with my leg. And this is a wonderful position because it, uh, it bypasses the knee and it goes, you just keep going back, you know? If you want to get a job at the Cirque du Soleil, you go even further back okay. if you don't care. Yeah. Voilà. And the foot shouldn't be too close. You can make your foot go out. Remember, we made the foot go away and the foot go away. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, beautiful, Henriette. That's it. That's it. Except I would. No, no, it's good. Everything is good. Just this can come more here. No pain in the knee, but lots of jacuzzi moment. Yeah, under there and in the hip. Henrietta looks really good. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. So that's where we are, like that. And you can make little movements. Breathe. If you wanted to do less, if you feel like we're doing more, wherever you can stay up here or we descend like we just did. No, now you're changing it. You have to stay up. Il faut pas s'asseoir. Yeah. Okay, and the breath and be surprised by what the body wants to do. Great, and then we come undone. You have to stop before it's too late. That's the main thing in yoga. Is that okay here? Yeah. Great. Huh? What? Just don't before it's too late. Because it's before you die. Before you remain there for life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't want to get stuck. So now the other foot goes forward. Okay. So instead of going into the lunge, which is a different movement, then we take the foot across. And then we put the hand back. So then we begin to externally rotate this leg and put a bit of pressure into it. Yeah, don't, don't force, you don't need to have cosmic experiences. You just go and then we, we go back with the back leg and like here it said earlier, it will feel different. Each side yeah, is different. Sure. Alors, il faut que tu recoules avec la jambe droite. Droite. Tu vas reculer. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said last time. Mm -hmm. The other one's harder. So we're in and we're breathing and we're making this big rotational movement here using our weight. Yeah. And then we come undone and we come out. Yeah, very nice. Okay. So just have a look. I put myself here. Okay. So take a moment to really look at what I'm doing because it's very important. So now we're going to do exactly the same movement but lying on our backs. And all of these are different ways of flossing your hips, you know, and getting your hips more mobile and preventing discomfort at any. So now I'm going to bring my foot towards my opposite shoulder, which is the same as bringing my foot towards my opposite shoulder, okay? And I'm gonna go in. And I'll just show you that to do that, you need to let your foot go up away from you, then you turn like you did earlier, and then you take here where those two nobles are, you hold, and then with your other hand, you push your knee away, and I'll go over it a number of times, and then you bring the foot over, okay? What you mustn't do is this one. Okay. This is the one we do for sitting in meditation, right? Mm -hmm. The cross leg one. Well, this is the one where we injure the knee if we don't do it properly. This one, we bypass the knee and we educate the pelvis to do the rotation. It's very safe 
it's rare that you have pain here. It's often that you have pain trying to do this one. You know, I see you when you sit. So we're going to push. So we, we take the hand or the elbow, we push the knee away, and we pull the foot towards the opposite shoulder. And uh, you can make a sound. Okay, that's the movement. So go for it. So lying on your back, the leg goes up. The tricky bit is the same arm as leg. You put your elbow or your hand against the knee and you, you keep the knee going out. And then you pull the leg towards the opposite shoulder. So you have this rotation and, and the foot must go up and over. Don't pull your foot down to your pelvis. That's good. If the foot has come down to the pelvis, that's it, you're stuck. There's no way that it can travel because it goes against the two joints. It has to go up, the leg rotates out, and then it comes over towards the opposite shoulder and you push with your knee and it's marvelous. Yes. Yeah, and you have tons of time, you know, Perfectly okay to fail how the nature makes you out, and then the, the foot goes up and over. Yep. Under one. Il faut que tu mets les mains ici où il y a les petites. Uh -huh. Voilà, like that. This one here. Uh -huh. Tu ouvres, uh -huh. tu montes, uh -huh. et tu descends. C'est ça. Okay. So, here. Tu peux mettre le coude là, tu pousses, mm -hmm. tu montes. Ça, c'est le mouvement. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you can feel inside what feels right. That's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. You see, your foot is descending here. That's not going to help. Pour que tu montes, <coughs> your foot must go up to the sky and come down as if you were going to kiss your toe. That's it. That's beautiful. And then <clears throat> try the other side. First, you come back and breathe and rest. <coughs> Yeah, that looks great. And the other foot can be a kind of stabilizing, rooting thingy. So it's, it's that. If you hold from under, it's easier. Yeah. Then the foot goes up and over, and then with this hand, that's it, you push it away. See, that's the movement, away with... Yeah, don't try so hard. You know, like it's spaghetti also. If you overcook spaghetti, it's not very nice. Al dente. <laughs> to be al dente. So the, this spaghetti yoga pose has to be al dente. The foot goes up and over. Voila. It's right in there. Close your eyes. And just feel. If you want, avec le, le, la cou, le cou, tu fais la rotation externe là. Et avec les mains, tu montes et tu descends avec le pied vers là. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. 
That's good. Very nice. Very nice. This is digestive winter yoga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then have a break and come around onto your hands and knees. And we'll do one more thing just as a contrast. That was beautiful, everyone. So I could see the breath. I could see you were playing with the weight. And then you enter into the kind of logic of how is this working for me? Then it's beautiful. If it looks like you're doing, I'm trying to get the ideal shape, then it's not so helpful. <coughs> yeah, so take a moment to finish. How are you, Henry? Okay, so just so we know where we are. Remember, we did this one. The foot came like that, and then it went across. And it's me bringing my foot up and over to my opposite shoulder, right? Which is the same as this one. Okay, up and over to the opposite shoulder. Then a little more complicated for the body, but important for sitting is not, I don't want to sit like this when I meditate with my foot here, not always, yeah, but I want to put my foot in here. And it's when we make this movement in sitting that we can squeeze the knee, normally the inside of the knee, and there's a very big disc with a long moon shape, and we pinch it. That's usually 80% of the time why the knee is hurting when we're sitting, and that's never good. So if you sit cross leg and your knee hurts, stop, put some cushions, do some yoga, put a, a little sock in there so that you keep the knee open like a little loaf of bread. When I come round, I want to open my knee like a little loaf of bread like that. And then I can come in and I want to. So now, instead of doing this one and then this one, towards the opposite shoulder. I'm going to bring the foot towards the opposite pelvis. Okay, and I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna come through and then I'm going to come around. Okay, like that. So we're gonna do that. And here, if the knee hurts, you mustn't proceed. So I'll come around. Step one through like remember we put the foot there and then we went there now we put the knee there and then we go there instead of to the opposite shoulder we go to that's it to the opposite pelvis that's it. is that okay yeah. yes it is a wonderful movement once you find a way not to hurt your knee if it doesn't hurt great so here we are like this and then we support with the hands we keep the head up so the weight is in the pelvis and we just go back with the back leg. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just, just going back, step by step, back, back, back. Okay, have a look at me. So some of you, as you go back, watch, will go this way. Some of you, as you go back, will go that way. I can see right there and it doesn't matter. It has to do with the shape of the femur and the pelvis. So don't fight it to just stay completely in the middle. Notice, oh yeah, I'm going this way or that way. And it doesn't matter as long as the knee doesn't hurt. And you can rock a little bit just to mobilize the way that the femur goes very deep inside into the pelvis, into its cave. The head of the femur is like Elijah going deep into the cave in the pelvis where he lives or she lives. So this little rocky motion, it's okay on the knee? Ça va? Tu sens rien? Okay, good. good. It's not good. No, it's not fine. The other side. It's not being good. It's less than I have. Okay. Now, the foot here can be very down or more up. Okay, that really depends on your exploration that you want to do but no sensation here on the inside of the knee. And head up, and as we go back and we make little rocking motions or we're quiet, we may discover that we settle deeper into the pelvis, 
deeper. The breath. Yeah, you can close your eyes and dive in or open your eyes and notice the world around you or do both. But let's just allow the body as it finds its way to talk to you or to be with you, to whisper. You know, there are variations where you bring your head to the floor, but that puts weight in the knee. So we don't need to do that today. Just let the head stay up. Yeah, because the minute you lean forward, you see the weight goes into the knee. And uh, you, when you're up, the weight is in the hip joint. Mm -hmm. So to go forward, you need to keep the weight in the hip. So we'll do that another time. Just stay up. Orient the head bones up towards the sky. Let the weight really be in the pelvis. And then we come on down. We'll just take a moment in the middle. The breath. Notice. Yeah, and then we go forward with the other leg. Yeah, and we go back a little so that we can, sometimes I lift the back knee so I can come around. Yeah. Now, the foot of this leg shouldn't be, you don't need to point it. Huh? You can let it stay flexed. It's better for the knee. You're good here. That's better, Jeremy. Yeah. And then we're holding with the hands. And we have this feeling that the knee is free and that the weight, you see what my hand is doing? As the weight goes down, it makes the leg turn out. That's the movement, yeah, that we're looking for. And we go back and back and back and back. And let's just keep the head up, palms becoming huge. The two legs working, yeah. In fact, the pose is called the king pigeon pose because you're up with your chest open because eventually you reach back and get hold of your leg, you know, which you can do after Christmas. But yeah, so we go down into the roots and then the pose is opening. It's a wonderful back bend. Yeah, so little rocking motions, huge hands taking this time, whether we dive inside or open out to the world to feel. So I can feel that my right leg can't really extend as much. So it's pushing me into here. And I know that that's a basic injury that I had a long time ago. So I just rock and I just wait for my right leg, which is the one that's back, for it to open in here. Wait, I can lean into it a little. Yeah, there, there, just breath. Lots of head direction, lots of weight in the pelvis. Yeah, very nice. And then we come undone. And I think I'm just beginning to run over. Yeah, so we'll just close, just fold. Maybe knees a little bit wide and just let yourself fall. Go slowly because the hips will be, have moved quite profoundly. And just release through. Release through. Release through. Release through. It's wonderful because the poses are constantly teaching you the nature of effort, muscular effort, and the way we get tangled in it. And uh, really, the deepest movements in the body happen through a kind of undoing or non-doing on the wave of the breath as gravity is undulating and bouncing us on the ground. 
And it's the same in meditation. When we start meditating, we have this effort. We're efforting, bashing away at trying to be enlightened or trying to be peaceful or trying to say our prayer word or whatever practice you use. But over time, we discover that the silence is listening to us. And so the nature of effort goes, becomes turned inside out. And then it's a different kind of effort. It's a listening. And after a while, we discover that we are being meditated through, let's say. We are being sounded. We are being made into an act of attention. So human movement is a grosser aspect of that, and it's wonderful. So in, in the yoga, you, you discover this, you, you discover that you're being taught. Okay, so thanks everyone. Thanks to all of you. Um, if you meditate now, uh, we'll all meditate in, in a few minutes. And otherwise, wishing you joy and peace this Christmas.